Let's see. It's the transfer portal. It's a little crazy, as I'm sure Tony has some comments on as well. Tony Casillas, Big 12 uh, rec, uh, Network, Sirius XM. Also, we've told you, two-time Super Bowl champion, national champion, Lombardi Award winner, played with the Cowboys a couple of different times. Tony, what are your thoughts? Thanks for your time. What are your thoughts about this transfer portal? Um, I think it makes uh, quite interesting. I think that all of a sudden now players have the opportunity to make decisions and don't feel captive like they have in the past. I think that it's it's a total opportunist uh, for players that may be disgruntled uh, or just not or not happy, and it kind of puts them, you know, the coaches and the the program uh, kind of with their hands tied behind their back. I, I, in a nutshell, I'm really uh, I'm for it uh, because I think sometimes. Uh, as a player, as someone getting recruited, uh, you're naive enough to believe what coaches tell you. And when you get there, it's exactly totally what they told you to do. So it, it just makes it really just fascinating because I think on the negative part of it, the only thing that I don't like about it is because it, it makes it makes you coach a different way. Because I think now, and you know, look, I'm not one of these old guys that. Uh, that doesn't like the, you know, the this type of generation, but it does make coaches have to curtail the the way that they coach. All of a sudden, they they can't. They got to be more careful of, uh, of them being sensitive to what they may or may, may not say. So I, I think that that's the the issue that probably coaches have because a lot of players, if they're happy, they're like, okay, I'm just going to leave and go on the transfer portal. Yeah, Tony, isn't it kind of a weird? two-sided coin and that one it's good and that you know the transfer portal will allow you to to more easily find where you should be but also it it just gives a voice to people who if it doesn't go exactly their way they're going to leave yeah i think it, i think you can look at it the, the two ways uh, you know so some players that have the skill set and maybe a quarterback and maybe offense or defensive lineman or whatever the position may be um it gives them another opportunity. And, and, and look, I think that you couldn't do this, you know, three, four years ago, whenever the transfer reporter started. So I think that, I think, yeah, I think that you have to be, uh, you, you can't be naive about that. And I think it's very hard when you, when it comes to, you know, a 17, 18 year old kid coming to campus and, and look, you know, all of a sudden he's not happy. And, you know, to me, it just seems like it's a, it's, there's a lot of sensitivity there. Uh, but I mean, it, it works. It works for the really good players, you know. Not maybe for the guys that want to go somewhere, and maybe play at a program that may be not fit them, like I thought it would when they first came out of high school. So it does give them an opportunity, but it also gives other schools an opportunity to fill a void that they might not have with the guy that can all of a sudden come in and help them. Tony, uh, your thoughts on name, image, likeness. There's like three major, major topics in college football right now, and that's another one of them along with the transfer portal. Uh, it seems like those old Oklahoma teams could have certainly had the personalities to, to you know, get out there and be on commercials and do whatever. I mean, it's a whole new world we're all preparing for. Uh, what are your thoughts as someone who, you know, back in the day could have taken advantage of that if these rules were in place? Well, I think it needs to be good across the board. I think that, you know, I was thinking about this, that, that, I think it's something that's going to happen. You know, what they just said something in July that the players can take advantage of that. And, but I think it's, a, it should be kind of like, uh, what the NFL does, because I think certainly that's what we got to compare it to now, unfortunately, is that there's this players pool and whatever is sold through, you know, whatever merchandise, your jerseys, whatever that is. I think that they need to split it up across the board. Um, and it, it shouldn't be just one player because. I mean, look, you know, Baylor's take, Baylor's taking advantage of the, the players, what they do to the program. And the players are taking advantage of Baylor as far as giving them opportunity to play. And, and you know what? I cannot be that naive to think that these players, some of them, I, not, not just, not all of them, I want to go to college and get a, you know, college degree. I think they're first. And look, maybe this is just me. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm thinking out loud too much, but I think a lot of players are thinking about going to the NFL and that's not going to happen. I mean, not everyone's going to go and be a number one draft pick. Not everyone's going to play in the national football league. So I think now take advantage of what these colleges have done for so long. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be harsh, but to me it seems like that they prostituted these us players for so long, uh, using us to, you know, you know, build big venues, to build championships, and all of a sudden, you know, once you're done – um, it's all about it's all about the whole syndrome of what have you done for me lately. I mean, I've seen it on both sides, seen it as an alumni player, and I've seen it as a as a player, and then looking at what the you know what the your programs are doing now. So, I think it can't just be one guy. I think it needs to be a split up in a pool for all the players to take advantage of what they're making. And look, these guys are making a lot. I mean, these guys are getting stipends. People don't talk about that. Yeah. They're getting a lot more. They're getting a lot more than what people think they are. You know that. Yep. So. Uh, and, and people, they don't talk about that. So, but if, if you're looking at the big picture, if there's that much money that's, uh, that's, you know, there for players and selling merchandise and capitalizing on that and, you know, them creating championships based off all those players, then I think it needs to be divvied up evenly. Is that, is that, is that, is that something they can do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, is it realistic? Probably not, but I would start there. What was it like to not only win a national championship, but to win a Super Bowl in the same career? Man, I, you know, that's just a great question. I always, you know, I, I think it's all relative to what you've done. And I think that, I mean, I've had so many great relationships, you know, I, I with college football and OU and all those guys I play with to this day, but Man, to do what you, what the Super Bowl and what it's the, the the life of it and everything that it does after football, especially if you're in Dallas and they haven't done anything in 25 years, hmm. uh, it's pretty special. I mean, the magnitude of it is unmeasurable when it comes to playing the Super Bowl. I mean, it's unfortunately you mentioned I've, I've you know I've had both opportunities to do both, and uh, it, it's just an out of body experience to, to win and the Super Bowl and the play into, you know, a couple of them. I mean, it's just hard to, it's hard to describe. Tony, you mentioned that it haven't done anything in 25 years. And part of the issue in Dallas is that things are, you know, pretty ritzy, pretty nice. And that uh, they, they, they might have the, you know, kind of the modern era social media brand kind of taking hold of a lot of these players. And while they're, they're, you know, seemingly doing the best in their field, they're a lot focused on that. How did those teams that you guys had not get fo- focused too individually? Because you're talking Hall of Famers and superstars abounding up and down that roster, but the the focus at hand was always winning. I would say this. If we would have had social media back then, it would have been a reality show. <laughs> uh, been better. It, it would have been better than the Kardashians. It probably <laughs> – you know, I talked to someone, uh, it was a couple of weeks and we we're talking about, uh, you know, 30 for 30 did the, the last dance with the, 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 you know, the bulls of the nineties with Michael Jordan. And someone said, you know what, Tony, wouldn't that be a great series on Netflix about the team of the nineties of those Cowboys? But, um, you know what? I tell you what, when I, the answer to that question is, is this simple. It's Jimmy Johnson, even in, in modern day football and, and, in the nineties, I think that he would have had enough, uh, personality and a lot enough of respect for the players that, yeah, he lets you do what you need to do. You know, you can do your brand. You can go out there and get all your followers and take advantage of that. But you know what? You got to earn that. And I think for him, that's what he was able to do. It didn't, it didn't matter. I mean, he would take, he'd make an example of out of Tregman, um, whoever it was, he'd do, uh, use them as an example to send a message. Uh, and I think that that's really where it comes from. I mean, you know what? The Cowboys, I mean, it's a tremendous organization. Jerry has done such a great job of branding it, and all those players will be part of it. And, you, you, you know, it, it comes with it comes with the territory. And I think there's so many guys that get caught up in that that they forget what they're there, you know, there to do, and that's to, to represent that brand and win championships. But – you know, our focus was on one dude, and that was Jimmy Johnson. He would not allow us to to, to rest on our laurels and rest on our success. I mean, he is he is very. I mean, he is uh, you know, hardcore when it comes to making you you feel uh, not you know, not getting a big head and getting full of yourself. I mean, he's the guy that does that. And there's not too many dudes out there, uh, coaches that can instill that, especially in professional athletes. 
you uh, you played for Barry Switzer both in college and then you played for him with the Cowboys. And in fact, you came back to Dallas, and that was his third year. Are those? Uh, what was that like as him as a college coach compared to an NFL coach, or was he the same person? Well, he was the same person. I don't. I think that was the issue when he came to Dallas is that so many guys are were so used to structure, and not that Coach Switzer was not that type of coach. But he just kind of did it a different way, and I think for him it was a you know, a, you know obviously he got he had to basically resign from OU in 1989 and went through all that that BS with you know having to deal with that and really just wasn't he wasn't looking to coach and you know when your friend your best friend is a billionaire and owns the Dallas Cowboys and he just fired one of the greatest coaches that's ever coached and Jimmy Johnson and asked you to coach. And, oh, by the way, you may win a couple of rings. I mean, what are you going to say? You're not going to turn that job down. I mean, you know, you'd be stupid. So, but I think when he came to Dallas, Dave, I think that it was, you know, to this day, I mean, we, I love that man. I mean, we, we did something in, in, uh, in Dallas and we raised money, sent ourselves in uh, centers, but we all had the same stories about him, man. It's all, you know, how pure he is. And he would be that. That last, you know, that phone call you'd make, and mm-hmm. he would answer, and he'd come bail you out of jail or whatever it was. I mean, he would speak, you know, he would he would come to your 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 fam, one of your family members, your dads, and speak at his jewels. I mean, that's the kind of de- dude he, de- he is. And and I remember I asked him. I said so it was uh it was for the Super Bowl this last you know this last Super Bowl, and he he called me and he was mad about it because someone didn't mention me in the multiple you know whatever. I, I mean. But he was he was fired up, and I said, Coach, what's wrong with you? He goes, man, I just got off his Dalton's reporter. You know what? I'm going to get his ass because he wasn't – he didn't mention it. I said, Coach, that's okay. But – and I said – so then I asked him the same question. I said, Coach, I said, what did you enjoy most? Did you enjoy winning multiple national championships or winning the Super Bowl? Or – he goes, Tony, he goes, when I went to Dallas, there was 14 guys in that roster I did not know. Had no history with them. I, and, and so I didn't know any of those guys. But when I was in Oklahoma, I knew their parents. I knew their, their mom and dad. I knew their, their cousins. I knew everything about them. And so that's the kind of guy he is, man. He stays connected. But, look, I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. And a lot of guys, some guys, uh, they respond to that type of leadership. Inside, some guys don't. Uh, they resent it. And I think that that's ultimately what, what happened. I think in, in the media also was – when you, you can't speculate what someone is going to do, then I think people hate that because Coach Switzer would tell you like it is. I mean, there was no holding back. I mean, he was pure, and a lot of people have a hard time dealing with it, especially when you're in the media. Oh, he's one of a kind. His, his memory, his stories are, are just unbelievable. Uh, Tony, I would imagine on, on you know talking on the radio about the Big 12 as you do, uh, a big topic of discussion here recently is the college football playoffs. Uh, perhaps expansion in the works. Uh, there are years I know where the Big 12 could add two or three teams in with this model, but uh, it is controversial. What are your thoughts? You know, I think it's long overdue. I, I think that when they first came out, it was kind of this pilot, if you will, with four, with four teams. And I think after we saw that there was just indeficiencies and in some of the you know, the teams and deserve. I mean, four teams out of how many, you know, teams that play college football. I mean, it's just very difficult. And, you know, I think that, yeah, I think that, you know, 12 teams is fine. Um, I think it'll be interesting for Alabama because all of a sudden Alabama has to navigate and they'll be fine, and the, the Alabamas, but also they'll have to navigate through maybe, you know, one or two games. And sometimes, as you know, that there's days that you catch a team not on their best, well, maybe not Alabama, but, uh, but I mean, it, it just makes it more, there's a little bit more parity, I guess. Um, you get a lot of teams involved, and, and I, think, I think fans want to see that. And I think they kind of figured it out how to make money. And I think for them, that's more important, is really important to them. But in the, in the flip side of that, I think there's so many of these other teams that have been left out. So now you give them an opportunity to get be, be part of the tournament, and you have more play. You know, there's uh, there's more options. You know, there's there's guy there's there's different conferences can participate. You know, it's not March Madness, but twelve games is getting a lot closer to that than it will ever be. And I I really I'm I'm pretty fired up about that. 
Hey, uh, Tony, can't wait to get you on again. Always appreciate your time. Uh, continued luck. I, I saw that night with Barry Switcher. That had to be uh, just incredible. Uh, and, and thanks for you for being a part of the show again with us. Hey, so I, 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 I'm not trying to correct you, but I'm no longer doing radio on the Big oh. 12 on Sirius XM. But I do. But but I I, I do. Uh, I'm a contributor to 750 on Blogging the Boys. It's nothing but cowboy content. But I do have my own podcast. It's called the Tony Casilla Show. Uh, this week we're premiering the, the second season. Of, and our first guest is Troy Aikman. Uh, it's an unbelievable interview and show. So you can follow me on Facebook Live, uh, on the YouTube channel, and subscribe to the Tony Casilla Show. Uh, I, real quick, it's pretty interesting when you, you start talking to guys, you get on the air, and you guys remember Jeff Garcia, right? Yeah. He used to be the quarterback 49ers. So you guys remember all the, the, the star and the George Teague and, you know, the T.O. and everything. So we did. I, I had him on my show. I'm going to have him on, um, I think it's uh, probably four weeks. But it's interesting what happened to that whole T.O. When, whenever he, you know, put, the, you put, his, uh, put his fist on the star and everything. It's really interesting to, see, to hear what Jeff Garcia's answer was to that and how that all evolved. But. Anyway, that's how you can check us out, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me. I, I just subscribed to your YouTube channel. So uh, we, we're <laughs> on YouTube as well. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate your time and all the memories. All right, brother. Thanks right. anytime. Tony Casillas, the Tony Casillas Show on YouTube. Of course, we're on YouTube and getting blasting out numbers with a lot of our segments, including the Cowboys segments as well, including, I'm sure, the one we just did with Tony Casillas. Coming up next, Alvin 